All right. Okay. So, hello, dears. Ayan. Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back to the young. Anyway, all right. So, uh, welcome back again to another to the continuation of our pre-recorded lecture on labeled amino assays. And for this lecture, we're going now to this. We're going to start now to discuss the first type of uh, labeled amino assays based on label, and that is your radio amino assay. All right. So, medyo marami rin pa tayong ichichika, no? So, laban lang, Lord. Yeah, sana hindi man ako. Sana naman, hindi ako maging sabaw. But anyway, alright, so this is, again, radio amino acid. Uh, before that I forget, guys, no? I forgot to mention, for non-competitive amino acids, ganina, di ba? Um, katunay solid phase, yes. Um, pwedeng antigen or antibody ang nakabind. Okay? Alright. Um, because again, it would depend on the test kung unsa'y mong ginadetect. Is it the antibody ba from the patient? So, in that case, antigen ang nakabind sa imuhang solid phase, like sa tube ba or sa microtiter plates, di ba? Or, if you want to detect antigen from the sample, then of course, ang antibody na ang nakadetect, ang naka-attach sa inyuhang solid phase, di ba? Example sa ato ang, ato, uh, 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 sa akong gidro. Okay? Alright, so pwedeng antigen antibody. Okay, para di mo malibog. Alright, anyway. Okay, so we'll start first with radio amino assay. Again, as mentioned, uh, these are types of labeled amino acids na nag-differ as sila sa labels na gigamit. So, by the name itself, radio, so meaning mo gamit taog, radioactive substance or radioisotope. Alright? So, for a short history, 1950s, Yalo and Burston. Ayan, di ba? As mentioned, kapila na ko sing mention sa start pa lang sa semester, sa itong mga pre-recorded lectures, very important ang mga people, <laughs> the history sa IS. Yes, especially IS and blood banking. Usually, sa board exams, if na mga history, mga people na mugawas, sa ISBB yun na sila mugawas, or sa microbiology, sometimes ra. But most of the time, it's ISBB. Okay? So, nanay history yun. So, for radio amino assay, it's yellow and burston. Okay. And they used it, no, kung yun sa nalang pag-detect, they used it to determine the level of insulin and anti-insulin complexes in diabetic patients. And as mentioned, by the name itself, radio amino assay, ang label sa itong gigamit kay radioactive substance, okay, or radioisotope, okay? Um, they have, di ba, your radioactive elements, they have a nuclei that decay spontaneously, so meaning mo bungkang sila or mo decay sila spontaneously, like out of nowhere, like dili ra kailangan ng external something. So, ilaharag yun at their own time, at their own, um, yeah, ability na mo decay sila. And once they decay, they emit matter and energy. And muna siya itong detect okay? And these are some of the labels that we use. You have iodine-131, iodine-125, and tritiated hydrogen or trit, uh, tritium, yes, di ba? Basic chemistry ninyo, your hydrogen can contain a lot of mga... Um, isotopes, tama ba? Isotopes, okay. You have deuterium, di ba? If dalawa, if hydrogen 2. And tritium is of course kung 3. And protium if usa na hydrogen, the normal hydrogen, di ba? Okay, check lang. Basic chemistry, di natin mo, mo ano, ano, review kayo, nalimot na po ko. <laughs> but anyway, yes, these are some of the labels that we use, di ba? Radioactive substance. And the most common is iodine-125 because it has a higher counting rate and the counting... Um, yeah, and the counting time is also less. And aside from that, mas taas yung half-life of 60 days. So, mas taas siyang pwedeng gamiton. Okay? Alright. Ayan, do iodine-125. Okay. Alright. And iodine-125 easily incorporated into protein molecules, di ba? Most of the analytes that I put, guys, that we detect using labeled amino acids are protein. They are proteins in nature. Okay? Antigens, antibodies, Chumamacus, you have hormones, diba? Diba? So, they can be easily incorporated into, pro, into your protein molecules and emits, emits, emits gamma radiation, which is then detected by your gamma counter or which is a crystal scintillation counter. Here's a picture. And very low quantities can be easily measured of radioactivity produced by your labels. Okay? So, what we're detecting again is the radiation, gamma radiation, in this case, iodine-125, that they emit after they react with the, um, or after they attach with the antigen antibody reaction. Okay? All right. Ayan. So, okay. And the principle of RIA or radiomonase is originally based on the principle of competitive. Ayan. So, competitive binding siya. So, what does it mean? Again, the antigen being, eh, antigen being detected, okay, it competes with your radio labeled antigen. Ayan. So, you have two antigens. You have, again, um, the patient antigen and the labeled antigen. This time, na a radioactive substance na label. To a limited number of binding sites on your high affinity 
antibody. And by the, because it's competitive, therefore, it's indirectly proportional. Okay, ayan. Okay, okay. So yes, that's it. The radio amino acid. And for your illustration, as mentioned, diba? Let's say you have two scenarios, okay? So you have letter A, very little patient is uh, antigen is present, therefore higher on radio radioactivity. Why? Because again, let's say you have a solid phase antibody because again, you're detecting um, antigens, diba? So you have labeled and unlabeled. So labeled is kaning na ay asterisk or nakafill. And you have the unlabeled antigen or the patient antigen, which is the unfilled na triangle. So of course, mubayin sila, all right? So therefore, mas kinsa may mas daghang ni bind is of course your labeled radio labeled antigen compared to your patient antigen. Okay? So therefore, mas taas ang radioactivity na ma-detect sa imong counter. Okay. So what does that mean since mas daghan mang radioactivity na, na detect, meaning mas daghang radio labeled antigens ang naka-attach sa imong antibody, therefore sila may mas daghan meaning mas gamay noon imong patient antigen. Gets? So that's indirectly proportional, okay? Whereas, second scenario, mas daghan imong patient antigen compared sa imuhang radio-labeled antigen. And again, competitive man, so magpaunhanay sila sa limited binding sites. So of course, mas mudaog ang daghan compared sa gamay, di ba? Yes, mas mudaghan, di ba? The more, the better. The more, the merrier. Charot. Okay, so since mas daghan man ang imuhang patient antigen in this scenario, therefore, mas sila ang mubind sa imuhang antibody, okay, therefore, less ang radioactive labeled antigen, radio-labeled antigen na nakabind, therefore, mas less ang radioactivity man na ma-detect, which means that mas daghan ay ang patient antigen kaysa sila may ni-overpower, sila may nakabind sa antibodies na naasay muhang solid phase na material, okay? I hope na gets ra. That's the principle of competitive um, binding, Okay? All right, I hope na gets right Nasha. All right, okay, and we have two um, tests. You have first the radio immunosorbent assay, your wrist, okay, wrist, charot, and radio allergosorbent assay or your RAST. So how do I remember? Radio immunosorbent is total IgE, and radio allergosorbent, which is RAST, is for specific IgE. How do I remember? Specific IgE man siya. So specific talaga, meaning specific IgE, so you're detecting allergies talaga, like specific allergies. So therefore, it's for RAST, radioallergosorbent. Ayan. So that's how I remember lang. And then radioimmunosorbent is of course total IgE na. Okay? I hope na gets ra, and I hope maganahan mo sa akong nemoanek. Char, basta RAST, allergosorbent, so it's more specific paminawon, di ba? So it's like you're really detecting allergies. And di ba, IgE, they usually increase in allergies. So if you're specific, detecting allergo, allergy, so therefore, you're also detecting specific IgE. Okay, or IgE to specific allergens. I sorry. Okay, IgE to specific allergens. Because you're really looking at allergo, you know, allergo, nasa pangalan na, allergo. Okay, so you're really looking for specific allergens. So IgE to specific allergens. Okay, RAST. But if total IgE is, of course, the RIST, immunosorbent. Okay, so... Depends na ninyo guys if inyong gamito na akong mnemonic, but that's how I remember it. Okay, RAST and RIST. Lumalabas sa boards, yes. Very common question then. Sa inyong mga exams puhon. Okay, alright. Ayan, RIST and RAST. Radio immunosorbent assay and radio allergosorbent assay. RAST and RIST. Okay, alright. Ayan. Now, what are the advantages? These are usually, your radio immunoassays are really um, extremely sensitive and they are precise for determining trace amounts of analytes that are small in size. For example, TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone and total serum IgE. Yes, I have, my mom, yes, um, has a thyroid problem. So usually if magpa test siya sa lab, sa SUMC, they use their principle na for detecting TSH, FT3, FT4 is radio, radio immunoassay na. So it's very specific, very sensitive then. Okay, all right. The disadvantage is, of course, mostly concerning healthcare, uh, the health hazard. And aside from that is the procurement, acquire, uh, the acquiring of very expensive na mga materials and reagents and even machines. Because again, you're utilizing radioactive substances, so they are really, they can be a threat, no, a potential health hazard because radioactive man. Okay? And aside from that, mga regulations pa in terms of disposing radioactive wastes, 
because of course they are very much dangerous to humans and even the environment diba? so you need to comply with a lot of regulations and aside from that also the machines that you need are very much expensive okay so those are some of the disadvantages okay so that's for your um, radio immunoassays now for the next type i sorry a disadvantage still pa rin, pa rin pala Problems with disposal, short shelf life of labels, and again, expensive equipment, as I've mentioned. Okay, all right. Now, since these are the disadvantages of radio immunoassays, no, most now of your laboratory, they are now um, going no, towards enzyme immunoassay because your enzymes, again, they are very much, you know, can be found everywhere. <laughs> can be found in nature and, you know, even in animals, plants, diba. Right? So, they are really much um, um, convenient, no? You can really acquire them easily. And aside from that, they are cheap, low cost. They also do not present much of a health hazard. Okay, so because of the limitations of uh, RIA, you know, the scientists again have formulated another uh, type, you know, another type of amino assay, labeled amino assay, and that is through the use of enzymes. Okay, because again, enzymes are naturally occurring that catalyze biochemical reactions, of course. You, know, you already know what are enzymes, right? The bulk of CC2, Clean Chem 2. Focusing on enzymes, right? I love that topic. But anyway, yes. All right. And they react also with suitable substrates, right? Enzyme, they need a substrate. And once they react, their products may be chromogenic, meaning they release color. Fluorogenic, either more releasing or fluorescence, okay? Or luminescent, they release light, okay? All right, ayan. And some type of spectroscopy then can be measured using spectrophotometer, absorbance. Okay, all right, again, okay. All right, now your enzyme labels, they can either be used, to, uh, either be used qualitatively, meaning again, color lang, no? uh, light changes, na -na, or quantitatively. We can diba, extrapolate, diba? yes naman, using absorbance and all that um, to determine concentration again, of the specimen. Okay, all right. And the choice of this enzyme based on the number of substrate molecules converted per molecule of enzyme, the ease and speed of detection, and stability. So it would depend on the laboratory kung sa lang need the enzymes. That would also be um, at par or that, 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 would, that would depend, again, on their need, on the types of tests that they will perform and the types of substances that they need to detect. Okay. All right. Ayan. Availability and cost of enzymes also play a role in the choice of particular enzyme, yes. Because there are some enzymes that can be costly. Okay, all right. But these are the typical enzymes used. You have ALT, horseradish peroxidase, the two most common. You have glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase or G6PD and beta-D-galactosidase. So again, as you can see, very familiar names, diba? I think aside lang for a horseradish peroxidase. By the name of horseradish peroxidase, that is, gika na siya sa, um, uh, gika na siya sa, Horseradish, kalamungay, yes. Horseradish peroxidase, yes. Hor uh, ALP, of course, alkaline phosphatase, very, diba? In your clean chem too, asa man na siya elevated kaayo. ALP is elevated in your obstructive jaundice. Charat naman, yes. Press the buzzer, charat. Okay. ALP, horseradish peroxidase, G6PD, and of course, beta D galactosidase. But the two most commonly used is, of course, ALP and horseradish peroxidase. Why? Because they are, um, they have the highest turnover, okay? And high sensitivity, and they can also be easy to detect. Okay, all right. Ayan, now we go now to the different types of your enzyme immunoassays. And your enzyme immunoassays, they are first uh, two types muna based on separation. You have heterogeneous and homogeneous. And ang heterogeneous pagyod will start with heterogeneous. It can be both competitive or non competitive. Okay? So for heterogeneous enzyme immunoassay, we'll start first with competitive. Okay, and these are the first types of enzyme immunoassays that were formulated, still following RIA. Okay, because diba yung RIA, they, they are competitive, diba? So they followed RIA. So, of course, competitive po dang imuhang enzyme immunoassays, the first types of immunoassays. So, still the same enzyme labeled this time antigen. Ang label sa imuhang reactant na antigen is now enzyme compared to imuhang radio, of course, a radio immunoassay na radio labeled. So this time, enzyme-labeled antigens are, and your patient antigen, they are mixed simultaneously, and then they compete for the limited binding sites of your antibody, antibodies that are attached to the solid phase. Okay, so competitive, EIA. All right, okay. And of course, now washing to remove any non-specifically bound antigen. Okay, so this is a heterogeneous man, by the name itself, heterogeneous. So now washing. 
Okay? Answer the same enzyme activities inversely proportional. Di ba basta competitive? Inversely proportional. And it's usually used for measuring small antigens that are relatively pure. Ayan, sana all pure. Pure ka pa ba? Charot. <laughs> okay. Example, insulin and estrogen. Okay. And again, so the same uh, principle, solid phase antibody bounded. So you're looking for antigens. Ayan, so um, you then add your enzyme-labeled antigen, okay, washing, and you add the substrate. Of course, ang antigen na ashay substrate, kung saan yung react di ba, if wala substrate. So mo-add kang substrate sa antigen, and then you look for color. By the name itself, di ba, if, as, if um, little ra ang antigen, patient antigen na nakabind, so meaning mas daghan, ang imuhang enzyme-labeled antigen sa nakabind. So, pag-add sa substrate, therefore, mas taas ang color. Okay? Alright? Ayan. So, and, uh, inversely proportional ang enzyme activity. Okay? Alright. That's for, that's a scenario. Okay? Alright. Let, the, I hope you get lang. Basta competitive, inversely proportional. Alright. And, the next type is the non-competitive EIA, which is, again, I think, uh, most common na. Okay? Because, again, it's, higher sensitivity, specific, as uh, it's specific, sim simple, and even low cost. And they're often referred to as your indirect ELISAs. Ayan. Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays because your enzyme-labeled antigens, they do not participate no, in the initial antigen-antibody reaction. So, by the name itself, non-competitive man. So, meaning, um, the enzyme-labeled reagents are added after na, na nag-react ni Mohang solid phase antibody or antigen and your unknown na analyte may be antigen or antibody coming from the patient. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, non-competitive. Okay. But still the same. Heterogeneous man siya. So, washing. Okay. Nai washing. Mga gusto mong washing dyan. Charot. Okay. Alright. Ayan. So, again, by the name of either antigen or antibody ang naasa solid face. Okay? Ang naasa imuhang imuhang tubes or microtiter plates. As I've mentioned, ba? And the amount of enzyme labeled this time basta non-competitive, it's directly proportional. Okay, and usually it's used to detect antibodies to HIV, EBV, HBV, and HCV. Ayan. So usually mga viral um, infections. And according to Steven CS, yes, most of your viral infections, they can be very much detected by this non-competitive EIA. And no other methods daw can detect viral infections um, effectively, okay, than your non-competitive EIA. That's according to Stevens, okay? <laughs> Alright, again, so Directly proportional. So, ayan. So, here is your um, illustration, diba? Since we're detecting antibodies, man, of the patient, diba? So, your antigens, this time, ang nasa solid phase. So, gi-attach na sa daan. You add your patient antibodies, and then, of course, you add specific binding. You wash to remove any of the unbound antibodies. Example, kani. And then, you then add your enzyme-labeled antibodies pa rin. And these anti-label, uh, enzyme-labeled anti bodies you know, or immunoglobulins, they then bind okay, to the patient's antibodies and then you wash pa rin and then add substrate. So, if taas ang color or taas ang color or enzyme activity na, na detect, it means that daghang antibodies po ang nagamit okay, or na-attach siya okay, sa imuhang enzyme-labeled antibodies or reagents. Okay? I hope na get So, directly proportional. All right. Okay, that's for non-competitive EIA. But we have another type of non-competitive EIA, which are known as your capture assays. And capture assays lang if this time ang imuhang antibodies ang naasa solid phase. Okay? Alright. Kung antigen dyan ang naasa solid phase, pares ganina, that's a non-competitive EIA. But if antibodies ang na-attach sa solid phase, then that's a capture assay. But it's still the same, it's a, a, it's a type of non-competitive EIA. Alright, okay. Also called sandwich immunoassays, the antibody is bound to solid phase, and your capture assays are also best suitable to antigens that have multiple determinants. Meaning, daghan siyang epitopes, daghan siyang pwedeng kabayindan. Okay? So, example, antibodies, polypeptide hormones, proteins, chumamakas, and even microorganisms, especially viruses. Meaning, daghan siyang pwedeng epitopes, pwedeng kabayindan. Okay, multiple determinants. Alright, so here's an example of your capture assays. By the name itself, antibodies na ang nasa solid phase. Okay? Alright. So it's specific. If capture assay gives ang imuhang test, it means that ang antibodies ang nasa solid phase. Okay? But if you mention a non-competitive EIA, then the antigens ang nasa imuhang um, solid phase. Okay? Alright, so solid phase antibodies man ang nasa imuhang uh, plates or test tubes. So therefore, you're detecting patient antigens. So pag-add mo sa patient antigens, binding occurs. 
washing happens, of course. And the next is, of course, you, you add then your enzyme labeled antibodies. And this time, diba, it looks like a sandwich. Okay, na sandwich ay mong antigen by two antibodies. That's why it's called sandwich <laughs> immunoassays. Okay? All right. And still the same, you wash and then you add substrate. And still the same, directly proportional pa rin. Why? Because again, if mas daghang color, it means mas daghang antigens from the patient ang naa. Mas daghang enzyme labeled antibodies ang nagamit. Okay? All right. So directly proportional. All right. Okay. Ayan. Now, we go now to, again, another type of um, enzyme immunoassays, which are your rapid immunoassays. And din na mo, gam, din na mo sulod atong mga kits, atong mga, yes, pregnancy kits, yes. Nagbabalik. <laughs> yes, nightmare, chalot lang. Okay, your membrane-based cassette assays. And again, primarily, they are used for point-of-care testing, di ba? As mentioned, your clean chem point-of-care testing is testing outside of the laboratory that can be performed even by non medical laboratory personnel, like your nurses, you have even mga patients mismo, diba? those lay person, diba? so membrane-based cassette assays or your point-of-care testing, diba? primarily designed for that, for that purpose. But even in hospitals or even in the clinical setting, these are already been used, modified lang to increase sensitivity and even pwede siyang mas semi-quantitative, okay, para na ay murag like any qualitative result, like duha ka lines, okay? And what does that mean? When say possible concentration niya, inana, okay? So semi-quantitative, okay? Single use, so after testing, of course, you dispose, you do not use it again. Disposable assays in a plastic cartridge, okay? The membrane is usually nitrocellulose, okay? And it's able to easily immobilize proteins and nucleic acids. Either antigen and antibody, okay, can be coupled to the membrane, and the reaction is looked at by looking for color, color production, okay? So, pwede, pwede antigen or antibody ang nasa imuhang membrane daan, okay? Later in the, uh, in the, what's that In the illustration, okay, all right. And some test devices, they need separate uh, addition of patient sample, wash reagent, labeled antigen or antibody in the substrate. Now, these um, steps, no, uh, it's now encapsulated into one test and that is now, um, your immunochromatography, which is again what is uh, the the principle of most of our testing kits now. No, kana mga rapid nato na mga immunoassays, COVID, yes, um, pregnancy test, dengue duo, sa paman drug testing, yes, I think <laughs> that's all immunochromatography. They combine all the steps here, kani mga washing, patient sample, yes, into one. So all in one nasha. Okay, <laughs> all right. And immunochromatography used to identify microorganisms as pio and as agalacti. You also have pregnancy, yes, naman, di ba? AUBF na to. Troponin in heart attack. Naan na ba mo yung mga cardiac markers? Yes. Clinchem 2. Clin Clinchem 1, yes, di ba? Troponin. Uh, troponin T. Troponin I, di ba? Trop I, trop T, di ba? And your hepatitis B surface antigen later. For hepatitis serology, we'll discuss that. Okay. And again, most of the time, your immunochromatographic kits, they release qualitative results. So, diba? Usually two lines, one line, diba? Okay. Rather than quantitative. So, this is now your kits. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's now the parts of your kit, diba? So, as you can see, di siya basta-basta, guys. Basi makayang muna. Ay, ano na ni Chi? Like, easy to perform, pero ang principle, dili easy to understand. Charot lang. Okay. So, you have, of course, a sample port, kung asa ni mo ibutang i mohang sample. And then, you have a conjugate pad and membrane, which then contains your immobilized either antigen or antibodies. And then, the control line and test line, and of course, the absorbent pad. So, ang movement nato is from here to here. Okay? So, this is the absorbent pad, which then um, absorbs the excess na mga reagents and sample. Okay, once na mo agi sila deri. And that's why it's called lateral flow then. Lateral flow um, immunoassays. Okay, lateral flow because ang flow is from sample to here. Okay, lateral flow. Alright, okay. Ayan, okay. Okay, now we continue now. <laughs> okay, now okay. We continue now to the um, parang flow, no? Para mas makasabot mo. Alright, so start first is of course the sample is loaded. So, Serum, usually, which contains your antigen or antibody, depending on what you detect. Let's say pregnancy uh, test. So you're detecting HCG. Okay, all right. So let's say you, you have now the urine there no, that contains HCG. Okay, now your HCG now will serve as your antigen. 
Okay? This will now serve as the antigen that you're detecting. Okay? Alright. Now, the number two, um, it contains now the antibody this time. Okay? I'm very much specific na ni siya kay HCG man. So, the, the number two there, it contains already an antibody that is specific to HCG. Okay? Alright. Now, gets. Now, let's say the urine sample contains HCG. So, the antibody in sample 2 will combine with your HCG. So, let's say beta HCG, uh, it now contains the antibody. Okay? No, nag creates like immune complex. Okay? Which is, um, this is known as your conjugate, kanina number 2. An antibody conjugate. And they form a complex. Now, this whole complex will now move to number 3, which is your uh, detection zone. Okay? So, it will first go to the test line and then your control line. Okay. Now, from, from number two na part, um, it also contains mga excess na mga antibodies. Okay. Alright. Excess antibodies to HCG na wala na bind. Okay. So, they will move together towards the test and control line. Okay. Now, for the test line, so since na may na form na complex, di ba? So, let's say, muna siya ang test line. Sa test line, napadyo yung antibodies, okay, antibodies that are specific to this complex na nag-weight dito, okay. Now, pag abot sa complex, okay, pag abot sa complex, okay, since na na may complex dito na naabot sa test line, and the test line, again, contains already enzyme labeled, usually enzyme labeled na antibody, so, iyang i-capture this time ang complex, Okay? And since specific man to siya na reaction, di ba? Enzyme labeled. So, because of that, they then create a color reaction. Okay? Muna siyang mo color ang na ay color line sa T, di ba? If positive. Okay? And of course, control line since excess antibodies here, na may excess antibodies na wala na bind. Okay? So, i-catch po na siya sa control line which contains um, antibodies pa rin to HCG that has an enzyme. So, munang mo color gap po ng imuhang control line because even if negative, meaning walay, walay HCG ang patient, nandiyan po yung mga sobra na antibodies, di ba? Example ha, HCG, sobra na antibodies na nabilin, okay? Na wala ni react. Na mo react this time sa imuhang control line that contains the enzyme labeled antibody pa rin, okay? Alright, so antibody na nag-react sa antibody. So, muna siyang enzyme labeled, Okay? Alright, enzyme label siya na antibody na nag-react sa mong sobra na antibody to HCG na wala ni react sa mong sample. Okay? Muna na colored line. And of course, the re excess immunoreactants, mga labeled mong sample, labeled immunoreactants will be absorbed by the pad. Okay? Alright, I hope na gets lang. <laughs> I hope na experience na ako taro. But hopefully na gets lang. Okay? Alright. Alright? So, muna siya ang reaction na nahitabo sa mukhang kits. Okay? It would depend. Again, it would still depend on what you are detecting. If antigen mo gina-detect, if, uh, if antibody mo gina-detect, um, example, you're detecting mga HIV antibodies, HEPA B antibodies, then of course, ang naa sa uh, number two, dire, ang imuhang conjugate na na is antigen. Meaning, known antigen ang naa dito. Kaya you're detecting antibodies man. Okay? Alright. I hope na gets lang. <laughs> okay, alright. Ayan, so it would depend on the... It would depend kung unsay naasun sa'yo mong kit sa mo hanggi na-detect sa patient sample. Is it antibody ba or antigen? So, kani this time, ako ang gi-illustrate is pregnancy man. Uh, this is an antigen at itong gina-detect. Okay, so, um, yes. Yeah, ako mga ano dyan ha? Yes, AUBF students before sa first sem. Nako, sana naman na-remember ato ang discussion on this on um, immunoassays. Siguro ako na lang i- ano, include ang part about katong pregnancy kit para mas makasabot mo sa procedure. Okay, ako lang i-include later. Okay, wala na ako ng putang dire, but I will include. Gikan dyan po itong Sir Gemu, so still the same, the best. Okay, alright, ayan. So, that's it. That's the flow of your immunochromatography. For your kits, pregnancy kits, mga rapid kits, sa mukhang antibodies, di ba, for, for COVID, yes. Tanang mga kits. Okay. Again, would the contents of your kit would matter on what you are detecting in the sample. Is it antibody or antigen? Okay. Alright, so that's for rapid immunoassays or your immunochromatography. 
Okay, again, all those are under homo heterogeneous enzyme amino acid. Okay, now for your homogeneous, of course, by the name itself, by the name itself, homogeneous, it does not need any separation steps. So, walang washing na nangyari. Okay? They are less sensitive than heterogeneous, but they are much easier to perform and can adapt easily to automation. Competitive siya na amino assay, okay? But it's homogeneous, so no washing steps. So, by the name itself, it's competitive. Alright? So, um, where do we use it? <laughs> Sorry. So, where do we use it again? It's primarily for low molecular weight analytes, such as your hormones, therapeutic drugs, and drugs of abuse in both serum and urine. Ayan. So, I think, siguro ato ang test kits di ay sa drug testing. Murag homogenous to siya. I'm not sure lang. Okay, alright. But yes. Um, so, we then, change, we then look at the change in enzyme activity. After the enzyme labeled antigen has binded or have binded to your antigen antibody uh, reaction. Okay, let's look at the illustration later. So, these are the procedures. You have a reagent, an reagent antigen, of course, which is labeled in your labeled with an enzyme tag. Um, when your antibody that you're detecting or antigen ba, uh, binds to specific determinant sites, the active site on your antigen, that is sa imuhang reagent antigen, is blocked. So meaning, wala na siya, di na siya ka-react. Di na ka, yeah, di na siya ka-react with your substrate. Okay? So your free antigen competes with your enzyme-labeled antigen for the limited number of antibody, antibody binding sites because again, it's a competitive immunoassay. And the enzyme activity directly proportional to the concentration of the antigen or patient antigen or HAP10 present in your solution. Okay, so in, your, in illustration, ayan. So solid phase antibodies ang naa, so you're detecting antigens, di ba? So you're detecting antigens. Low molecular weight hormones, your serum drugs, okay? Uh, your drugs of abuse in urine or serum. Okay, so antibodies in your solid phase uh, have been attached, okay? Or have been absorbed, all right? Adani mo siya sa imuhang labeled antigens, kaning green, and the patient antigens, which uh, your antigens, gikan sa imuhang patient. Okay, so imus lang i-add together, di ba? So simultaneous, mag-compete sila, to, sila with each other against any mga limited binding sites. So let's say small amount of antigens, okay? Small amount of antigens. So therefore, mas daghang enzyme-labeled antigens ang naka-react, okay? Or ang naka-bind, okay? So therefore, mas daghang an enzymes ang nawad an og activity or nasarada nila hang um, ilahang binding sites sa imuhang antigen. So therefore, less ang enzymes na na-available na mo-react, okay? Therefore, pag add mo sa substrate, less po ang color na ma-produce. Therefore, directly proportional, okay? So you may be thinking, sir, competitive siya pero directly proportional, di ba? If competitive, it's indirectly proportional. Yes, so na siya mga, <laughs> mga modifications sa procedure. So diri lang, homogeneous enzyme immunoassay. Competitive siya, immunoassay, but directly proportional. Why? Because again, it means that the less... Um, color na ma-produce mong enzyme and substrate na reaction. It means less po ang antigens na present. Why? Because mas daghang antibody uh, reagent na enzyme labeled ang ni-attach sa imuhang antibodies sa solid phase meaning mas daghang which leads to mas daghang enzyme loss of activity. Because again, pag bind sa imuhang antibody o imuhang um, enzyme labeled antigen ma inactivate ang imuhang enzyme okay dili na makabind og substrate so therefore pag add mo sa substrate less color ang ma-produce okay so which means that less po ang antigens di ay sa patient kay mas daghan man daghang enzyme labeled antigens man ang nakabind sa antibody sa solid phase noon okay whereas if mas daghan ang imuhang antigens more color change directly proportional so the same reason why because ang mubain na noon sa mong antibodies this time are your patient antigens. Okay? So therefore, mas daghan ng free na enzyme-labeled antigens. Okay? Ang enzymes, okay? Mas free na sila to, to uh, convert the substrate to a color product. Okay? So therefore, mas daghan ng antigens. Okay? Uh, mas taas ang color na ma-produce. Therefore, mas daghang antigens gikan sa patient TI. Why? Because ang patient antigen na ang nibind karon sa solid phase antibodies and this time, must free na ang enzyme-labeled antigens to um, reduce your substrate and produce a color reaction. Okay? That's homogeneous enzyme amino acid. I hope na gets lang. So as you can see, walay, walay washing na nahitabo. Homogeneous. Okay, alright. I hope na gets lang ha? Okay.
competitive Japanese hang uh, format, but again, directly proportional lang siya. So you dara ni differ. But the rest competitive usually it's indirectly proportional. Okay? All right. Okay, ayan. Advantages again as mentioned, um, sensitivity niya is similar to um, RIA, so very high. And at the same time, so it's you have to choose na EIA RIA, same sensitivity pero wala kayo health hazards ang EIA. So of course, dito lang ka sa EIAs because anyone can perform it. Um, like mga, even mga buros or mga pregnant women, med techs or scientists can perform it. If they are radioactive, then pregnant women or yeah, pregnant women cannot perform uh, these tests. If free, uh, I was about to say pregnant women and men. <laughs> uh, but that, that's possible, naman. But I mean, like pregnant should na like can seem physically, uh, yeah. Because pregnant men and women, like we, you say mangod na we are pregnant, like both men and a couple will say we're pregnant. It's mean, it means both of them are expecting, diba? So, why am I making things complicated? Basta pregnant women. <laughs> okay, all right, ayan. And the use of non-isotopic enzyme also, high specific, high specificity, and, um, yeah, and it does not have a short incubation time compared to RIA. No need for expensive instrumentation, yes, you can use spectrophotometer and then whether put color, diba, rapid assays. Because most acids can be read by spectrophotometry or by noting the presence or absence of color. So, does not use any expensive um, instruments. Aside from that, reagents are inexpensive pa rin, long shelf life. And although homogeneous assays are not as sensitive as your heterogeneous, they are simple and require no separation step. Diba? Um, yeah, for homogeneous enzyme amino assays. Bahala wala siya separation step, it's still simple to um, produce. Okay, it's quite sensitive, but it's not that as sensitive compared to your heterogeneous enzyme amino assays. Okay. The disadvantage lang kay some specimens, yes, especially your zero, they may contain mga enzyme inhibitors. So that could lead to false negative results or erroneous results. So, mura na siya yung bantayan. So, nayo bang test samples or testing kits or test samples that would need inactivation of your sample, no? That would, um, that would depend again on the manufacturer, on the testing process, if kailangan jug inactivation sa sample. Let's say, kailangan inactivate ang complement, so magheating ka, same huang serum, and all that. All right. But that would be stipulated in the insert, yes, of your testing kits or in the manual of your uh, machine, diba? All right. And the size of the enzyme label may also be a limiting factor in the design of some assays. Why? Because maybe the enzyme labels is too small for your, <laughs> for your sample, for your antigen or antibody. So it could affect. No, the binding and eventually the reading of the results. All right. Okay. And lastly, um, also non-specific protein binding is another difficulty encountered with the use of enzyme labels. Uh, your enzyme labels can bind to other um, sub substances that can be found in your serum, not not only your antigen. So na non-specific na siya. All right. So as you can see, kabantay mo na each of your amino acids good. And later on, as we continue with the rest of the types, they have their own advantages and disadvantages. So it's in the discretion na of your laboratory, of your med techs, kung unsa lahang i-use. Okay? All right. Uh, what they think is much cost effective and still can produce accurate results. Okay? Without forsaking the quality and accuracy again of your tests. Okay? Ayan. So, dili. Ah, dili. So, hapit ko ma-fall. Wala na po yung musalo na ako. Char! Okay. Palagi na lang. Ah, charot lang. Anyway, all right, okay. <laughs> and as I mentioned, enzyme amino acids have largely replaced the your radio amino acids because, again, of the very, very many advantages, especially that it does not pr provide or produce any health hazard compared to radio amino acids. Okay. And aside from that, it can also produce a large number of, uh, it can also can test a large number of samples at a, sh at, at a short time point. So, very, very cost effective. So, munang most of your uh, clinical, yeah, routine clinical lab, they are really going towards enzyme immunoassays. Uh, if you're familiar, mga, um, um, I think most, one of the tests na ginagamit na ron for detecting antibodies to COVID, aside from katong kits, is ECLIA. Um, ECLIA. Uh, that's enzyme, so magamit kag enzyme, chemiluminescence, chemiluminescence, immunoassay, chemiluminescence. Okay. Later, we'll talk about chemiluminescence. So, enzyme chemiluminescence uh, uh, immunoassay. I've tried this in Galliaris also, Ilahang Architect, which is a machine. Uh, it uses Eclia. It also uses 
I forgot. Ugh, nalimot ko. Basta eclea, they use that. Enzyme, basta na enzyme. And em- emit, I think, or, I no, no, no. Basta enzyme. Enzyme immune assay pa rin sila. Okay? And of course, ibang ELISAs ninyo, those are all enzyme-based, di ba? So, most of your routine um, clinical labs, hospitals, they are really looking or gearing towards using enzyme immune assays na yun. Alright. Okay. <laughs> but again, naja po ibang hospitals that need radio immune assays. Again, that would depend on their need. That would depend on what they want to detect. Okay, ayan. So, they have a lot of choices to choose naman. So, sila na ibahala, di ba? So, paano matang magbuot sa ilahang choice, di ba? Alright. All right. Okay. So, for the next video and the remaining uh, videos, we'll continue na yun. So, as you can see, dagan yung chika. Ani na, na lecture mo ng mahadlo ko. Mo ng kapuyan ko, but laban lang. Alright. And for the next video, we'll start now on the next type of immuno assay based on format, uh, based on label, sorry. And that is fluorescent immuno assay. Alright? Okay, so I'll see you on the next video. Alright?